everyone today remember in the last video we have studied some trigonometric values of sin cos and tan related to 0 degree 30 degree 45 degree 60 degree and 90 degree today let's consider some more values with the sin cos tan cot etc with higher angles so let's consider sin of 765 degree to represent every trigonometric angle there are two types of representation one is n into 90 plus theta or n into 90 minus theta first we'll consider plus representation that is n into 90 plus theta to get that representation first divide 765 by 90 We'll get eighteen to ninety. That is seven twenty. The remainder will be forty-five. So write sine of seven sixty-five equal to sine of n into ninety. N is now eight. So eight into ninety plus theta. The theta value. will be the remainder which we are getting that is 45 so this is now sin of 80 into 90 plus 45 now let's apply co ratio rule the co ratio rule is if n is even ratio will not change if n is odd then co ratio exist so now n is even that is 8 so ratio will not change So the answer will be sine of the remainder which you are getting that is forty five degree. Now let's consider the quadrant in which the angle lies. For the plus representation, to get the quadrant, first add one to n. In the plus representation, to get the quadrant, we have to add one to n, divide that by four, and consider the remainder from this. That is, if we add one to eight, we'll get nine. If we divide nine by four, we'll get the remainder one, right? So, if remainder is one, angle lies in the first quadrant. If remainder is two, angle lies in the second quadrant. If remainder is three, angle lies in the third quadrant. If remainder is zero, angle lies in the fourth quadrant. If we divide nine by four, we'll get the remainder one. So angle lies in the first quadrant. So in the first quadrant, all the trigonometric ratios are positive. So sine also positive. So it is plus sine forty five. Value of sine forty five is one by root two. So the value of sine seven sixty five degree. Is equal to one by root two. Get the value of sine seven sixty five degree with the minus representation. Let's write sine seven sixty five equal to sine of. Now also it is n into ninety only, but in the division we are getting eight as the quotient. While writing n into ninety, increase this by one means increasing the quotient by one. So this becomes now. Nine into ninety minus theta. Now, while writing theta, we have to write the complementary part of the remainder. Now, remainder is forty-five, so complementary part will be forty-five only. So, now n is nine, which is odd. So, co ratio rule exists. Co ratio rule means if we have the sine form, if n is odd, sine becomes cos. That is actually cosine. What the co ratio rule says: if C O exists in the function, after applying co ratio rule, C O vanish. That means the remaining part will be sine. If C O is not there in the function, after applying co ratio rule, C O will be attached to the function, so that becomes cosine. Similarly, 
tan angle after applying co-ratio rule see here co co is not there after applying co-ratio rule if you attach co to that that becomes cotangent that is cot or if cot exists after applying co-ratio rule that will be converted to tan in the same way secant will convert to cosecant and cosecant will convert to secant now let's consider sin 765 that is sin of 9 into 90 minus 45 so 9 is odd number after applying co-ratio rule sin will convert to the form cos so cos of you have to write the value that is in place of remainder which we wrote that is cos 45 after that we have to check the quadrant where the angle lies now in place of n we have 9 in the earlier case to get the quadrant we add 1 to n and divide that by 4 now if the representation is minus representation then n itself is the quadrant now in place of n we have 9 so 9 itself represents quadrant place but we don't have ninth quadrant so divide 9 by 4 if the remainder is 1 then first quadrant if remainder 2 angle lies in the second quadrant if remainder 3 angle lies in the third quadrant if remainder 0 angle lies in the fourth quadrant now if we divide 9 by 4 we'll get a remainder 1 so angle lies in the first quadrant and we know that the value sign in the first quadrant is positive write the value of cos 45 that is 1 by root 2 but remember one thing while giving positive or negative sign according to the quadrant we have to check for the given function not to the answer so sin 765 again we are getting 1 by root 2 only now let's consider the second value sin of minus 1740 before dividing 1740 by 90 we should apply the rule sin of minus x equal to minus sin x cos of minus x equal to cos x and tan of minus x is equal to minus tan x now we have to apply sin of minus x equal to minus sin x. So if we use that rule over here, sin of minus 1740 can be written as minus sin of 1740. Now divide 1740 by 90. So we'll get 19 times. So 19 into 90 is equal to 1710 so the remainder will be 30 now if we represent 1740 in the plus representation form then it will be minus sine of n into 90 n is now 19 into 90 plus theta theta is always the remainder which you are getting that is 30 now now check the n value whether it is even or odd now it is 19 which is odd when n is odd apply co-ratio so sign will convert to cos cos of the remainder which you got that is 30 now check the quadrant it is plus representation to get the quadrant add 1 to n now n is 19 if we add 1 to this we'll get 20 then if we divide 20 by 4 the remainder which you are getting is 0 so if 0 is the remainder angle lies in the fourth quadrant now in the fourth quadrant sign is negative so one more minus sign exists so minus of minus cos 30 so minus minus becomes plus cos 30 and we know that value of cos 30 is root 3 by 2. Therefore, sine of 
minus 1740 is equal to root 3 by 2. Now let's move on to cos of 1860 degree. Cos of 1860 degree. Divide 1860 degree by 90. We'll get 20 times. So it is 1800. Reminder will be 60. So write cos of 1860 as cos of n into 90. n is now 20. 20 into 90 plus theta. Theta is a reminder that is 60 now. Now chitta in value whether it is even or odd. Now 20 it is even. So ratio remains as it is. So we will get cos of 60 because it is the reminder which you got. So cos 60. Now check the quadrant. It is plus representation. To get the quadrant add 1 to n. n is 20 now. If we add 1 to this we will get 21. If we divide 21 by 4 the reminder which you are getting is 1. If reminder is 1 angle lies in the first quadrant. So angle lies in the first quadrant and we know that in the first quadrant all the trigonometric ratios are positive so cos also positive therefore it is cos 60 cos 60 value is 1 by 2 so cos of 1860 equal to half now let's consider one more angle cot of minus 1380 degree now, if we use the formula tan of minus x equal to minus tan x, as cot is the reciprocal of tan, cot of minus 1380 is equal to minus cot of 1380. Now, divide 1380 by 90 degree. Then, we will get quotient 15. 15 into 90, 1350. So the remainder will be 30. So minus cot of this 1380 can be written as n into 90 plus theta form. n is now 15. 15 into 90 plus theta. Theta is 30 degree. Now, Check the n value. It is 15. 15 is odd. So, co-ratio applies. If we apply co-ratio, cot will convert to the form tan. So, minus tan of 30 degree. Tan 30 value is 1 by root 3. This minus remains as it is. Now, check the quadrant where the angle lies. It is plus representation. So, add 1 to n. n is 15 now. If we add 1 to n, that becomes 16. If we divide 16 by 4, 4 will be the quotient and reminder will be 0. If 0 is the reminder, then angle lies in the 4th quadrant. In the 4th quadrant, tan value is negative. As cot is the reciprocal of tan, cot also negative. So, one more minus sign exists. So, this minus becomes plus. Therefore, Cot of minus 1380 is equal to 1 by root 3. 